I'll talk a little bit more about, not about the product, but general um, advice on how to check your continental grip. So here's a tennis racket. And what you want to do is, um, if you can set it up so that I hit, you know, like a hatchet kind of motion or a hammer motion, the continental grip is also called the hammer grip for many decades. And if you hit and the racket goes underneath your elbow and taps your forearm, you're choked up, but you're holding a continental grip and then you just slide it down and then it would be like hammering a nail. That's one way to get it. If on the other hand, you're used to that pizza grip like this, then when you bend it, it's gonna miss your arm on the inside. The racket's gonna pass in line with the uh, middle of your chest. And if you're on the other side, the racket's, you see, it's gonna go there, it's gonna miss your arm. So picking it up so it touches your elbow, as you can see, and then just sliding it down. And it's the same as we force you to do because these have grooved uh, finger slots. I think you can see it pretty well here against the contrast. And there's only one way to hold it like that. Now, another exercise that you can do at home, which I really like is choke up to start. Make sure you got the right grip by tapping underneath here. Um, if you really have trouble, I mean, this might sound funny, but put a piece of duct tape around your hand. Don't be afraid. In the old days, we would take off the grip, um, get a glove, glue, put the hand on with the glove, put on glue, put it on the racket, and then when you want to practice, just slide your hand into the glove. And obviously, if it's sweaty and you got various players wanting to test it, it's kind of yucky, but... Um, you know, we've been trying for God, years and years and years how to help people because this is so important. So this little exercise you can do at home is you find your grip and then you just want to open that racket face. This ties into the volley and you just spin it. Now I'm using a pickleball just because it's, it's a little harder than a tennis ball on strings, but you can see I'm getting back spin and then I can switch with the same grip and spin both ways. So it's under, under without changing grip. With the volley you get, with the continental grip, you get the same angle, whether you're getting a forehand or backhand volley, which is pretty incredible. And it simplifies a lot of things when you don't have to worry about changing the, the racket angle or doing this and then going like this for a backhand and not being able to hit balls that are hit at you. A lot of limitations on the volley. Um, and again, we have, uh, devices like the catching racket because the volley is not a swing. It's really like receiving the ball and cradling the ball. Like if someone tossed you something very delicate, you would catch it softly. That's all, you wouldn't smack it. So um, I, I, need that. I need that product personally because <laughs> I'm always <laughs> smacking my volleys into the net. So um, bottom line is great training aid, uh, very, very helpful. You can do it at home. It'll allow you to learn spin. I wanna mention one more thing about uh, backspin or underspin. Some people call it slice. Slice, we usually call it on the serve, it's side spin. And um, it, it, it's really an incredible phenomenon that took me years to realize. And it is when that hitting slice off an incoming topspin ball, once you reach that level where you're playing against players that can hit topspin on ground strokes, hitting underspin means if the ball's coming in like this, forwards, right? Whether tennis or pickleball, tennis gets more ball rotation than pickleball because of the nature of the soft ball and soft strings. But uh, if it's coming in like this and you hit underspin, right? It's coming in topspin and you hit underspin, the ball's direction, how it's spinning does not change. So that's gonna be incredibly more efficient than having to, you get an incoming ball with top spin and you have to swing up to change the ball's direction. Requires a lot more energy and the timing is a lot more difficult. That's why you'll find that players that hit slices, it's less fatiguing, it's easier to be consistent and it's a good backup when you have to play defense and you're reaching for shots just to go like that because to reach out and hit that top spin uh, when you're on the run, it's quite difficult. So uh, efficiency of play, higher levels of play, 
variety of play tactically. Better serve. The serve is, gosh, our statistics are over 40% of all the swings at the ball are serves in tennis. Because you get two serves. It's incredible. You can return serve by chipping on the return of serve. And that'll get you up to 78% of all swings at the ball in tennis because the points are shorter. Pick a ball's a little different. Tennis average shot can be two and a half, three hits, depending on the surface and what playing level. You know, serve, return, and one more shot. That's the average. You remember the long points when you hit 20, 30 shots, but then you don't remember the ones where the return is missed, it's a double fog, et cetera, et cetera. We always remember the great points, yeah. you know? And in pickleball, interestingly, the average shot is nine hits, much longer. So um, the why I'm saying that is the serve being underhanded pickleball and also the points being shorter, the importance of the serve uh, related to the continental grip, for example, is not as essential as tennis, but because pickleball is played faster, changing grips is not practical. In pickleball, your reaction time is half what it is in tennis, half. The baseline to baseline takes one second. Tennis is about two seconds for an average player. So kind of interesting, continental grip, if you want to get better. That's Any awesome. questions on that one from you guys or additions? Um, I mean, I was just going to comment, just speaking from personal experience since um, well, you actually uh, taught me the continental grip as like the first grip that I learned when I was starting, you know, tennis at like 10 and a half. That is still the grip I feel the most comfortable with. So I feel like there's something to be said of like whatever grip somebody learns first is what they will feel more comfortable with for better and worse. So I feel like I've always felt a little bit, I've had to work harder to feel more confident with my forehand versus I feel like people that maybe start with a forehand grip seem to have their forehand as their favorite shot. But then when you think about it, that's only one shot you're missing. Volleys, overhead, serves, backhands, because even the backhand, you're, you know, like, at least for me, I do a two-handed backhand. So my right hand is again in a continental grip, slice backhand. And, you know, slicing your forehand may not be as common, but it can be very effective when used. It also lets you mix in drop shots. It just, there's so much versatility. So yeah, I'm all for that. And I think any, yeah, any young player starting off should, you know, just start with the continental grip and then they can, it's easy. All they have to do is learn one more grip, the forehand grip from there. And they've already, they have everything else covered. They can learn like my kick serve is one of my favorite shots. Again, thanks to the continental grip. If you learn that grip right away, you can I think it allows you to do that. And then, so, um, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, totally. It's such a good point. And, you know, here's the question. So if you have two primary grips, if you're, I'm right-handed hitting tennis balls. So you got continental and then you've got uh, Eastern, semi-Western or Western forehand grip. It allows you to hit topspin. Continental grip doesn't do well with topspin. So now the question is, what's the limitation of the continental grip? You can't hit forehand topspins. Right. If you play with against somebody hitting using a continental grip on their forehand, just hit them high balls. They're going to have trouble. So you yeah. roll your tops and get it up to there, and then they're going to be very weak up here. That's the limitation of the continental grip for everything. That's it. So switching over, then you can your racket head can close on high balls, and you can come in and still brush up. Now, what's the limitation of playing? with this frying pan or, you know, pizza service grip, right? Let's list them. A, you're gonna have a flat serve, very predictable. You're gonna have a, a poofy, very soft, pushy second serve that just, you know, can get smashed, right? You're gonna have an impossible time hitting low volleys because the racket doesn't open with this grip. So if you play somebody with this grip at the net, you know, I can also draw you in a little bit, Billy, and then hit you low volleys. If you come in too close, because you're going to want to come close because you don't want the ball to drop, right? So you're going to get on top of that net so you can grab the ball before and hit down. And that, that grip will work for that. But then I have the option of lobbing. If I can get the ball behind you again, you're in, you're in deep caca. You know, you just can't <laughs> handle that. So um, 
Continental grip, essential. I chalk this up to one of the challenges that tennis has as a sport because it is so self-limiting. You get a lot of gratification right up, up, up front, just using you know, that frying pan kind of grip. You pick it up as you would anything. But um, I'll tell you, you know, there are many things you do in life that hold it with the continental grip. One of them is when you go down a handrail and there's stairs, you're holding a continental grip most of the time. When you pick up a suitcase, the handle, you're holding a continental grip. It's a very strong position anatomically, as well as range of motion and flexibility with the wrist for your tennis and, and pickleball. So I think um, that's, a, that's in a nutshell, the story of the continental grip and how to learn it and the importance of it. Thank <laughs> you.